Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Royce. I am super excited to continue Dave's defect with a discussion of corrugations. This single defect will teach us more about winding and web profile quality than almost any other. Even if you don't suffer much or at all from web corrugations, you must see this clip in order to understand webs and winding. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Corrugations are seen on a wide variety of webs, including paper, film, foil, non-wovens, textiles, and many others. As we've learned in previous defects, there is no single root cause. Instead, there is a single mechanics of defect generation that has many factors. The first major factor is web profile. There must be an abrupt or narrow gradient of something related to thickness, such as basis weight, caliper, density gauge, or whatever you call it. The second major factor is winding, most especially the winding nip as we will see. It is not possible to have a corrugation merely due to winding. You must also have an uneven profile. Corrugations are a very common defect seen on all but the heaviest of webs. They are known by a number of aliases including ropes and chain marks. Unfortunately, this is also incorrectly called a tin can, and that is a totally, totally different defect. In any case, you can recognize this corrugation defect because it is a narrow annular band on the wound roll within which you will find wrinkles at an angle. Of course, web handlers who have followed my work know that a wrinkle at an angle always means something is crooked. This is true of wrinkles on the web. This is also true of wrinkles on a wound roll, including the corrugation wrinkles. This defect is caused by the winding of a web that has a thickness variation. The mechanics begin with a web that has a thickness profile variation. The shape that would be most risky would be a high, low, medium pattern in a narrow range. It is possible, but more difficult, to develop the corrugation on a high to low pattern. Of course, the wound roll must build to reflect this pattern and will thus be big, little, medium. Obviously, this picture is very exaggerated because the diameter difference will be even tinier than the web thickness that drove it, which is tiny to begin with. However, tiny thickness variation does not mean tiny result. In any case, you might be able to get away with the profile variation if you have a pure center wind. The problem is if you have a nib. Obviously, that big part of that roll wants to turn faster speed because it is slightly bigger there. Conversely, the little part of the roll wants to turn slower. Yet, the nib will not allow this speed difference. Instead, it slows the big part down and speeds the little part up a tiny bit. Yet, this may be enough to twist the outer layers of the roll because that area in between is low and thus provides little support or little resistance to shear wrinkling. The presence of the corrugation defect alone is all that is needed to convict the web of the crime of thickness variation because there's almost nothing else that can cause a corrugation. Yet, 
you are most likely to get resistance from the web maker because they may not be able to see that gauge variation that caused this because it could be well below the resolutions of both test lab and especially scanners. If these instruments are not good enough, you might also try one of the roll hardness instruments that we discuss further in the roll quality measurement module of my award-winning and trademark Web 101 class. Some people use roll hardness to qualify raw materials because it has a better resolution than lab tests or scanner because it measures hundreds or thousands of layers instead of just one as the more traditional thickness measurement systems do. Yet, as with all winding defects, the place to start is not manufacturing, but rather it is first to wind as loose as possible, painfully loose, taking a special pains to reduce the nip load, or even removing the nip entirely if you can. If you can oscillate wider than the width of the defect, you might be able to smear out some of this abrupt variation. Unfortunately, oscillation complicates equipment and can in increase trim waste. After the winder has done all that it can be done, the problem falls on manufacturing to do a better job in leveling their wet product. This is almost as difficult to troubleshoot and remedy as fixing a baggy web. See my YouTube series, Web 201.45A through R, for ideas on how to do this. As we cover in my Web 101 class that has been taken by 5,000 students just like you, the pure low spot may appear as a diamond pattern in a narrow lane especially with high modulus webs. Again, note the wrinkle at an angle. However, now we have two angles. This is a high, low, high pattern of thickness instead of a high, low, medium pattern as seen with the corrugation. You are free to call defects whatever you want. No policeman will arrest you. However, please note that corrugations are not and have never been tin cans. Tin cans are an entirely different defect, often seen on thin films. The tin can has an entirely different mechanics and consequently an entirely different set of remedies than corrugations do. Please see Module 26 of my award-winning Web 101 course for further detail on the tin can. Unfortunately, while there are hundreds of articles on profile and hundreds of articles on nips, there are only about a dozen articles on corrugations, almost all of which come from the paper industry. Your most complete description of the corrugation defect, as well as many others, is again Module 26 of my Web 101 course that is available from AIMCAL, APITA, and TAPI. Thank you so very much for joining me in this defect solving and defect preventing series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will discuss another one of my favorite defects, curl. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time.